All right, so this is the start of your assignment. I'm going to kind of walk you through a little bit of it. Basically, it's an assignment where it's an ongoing thing, but you only have a week to do it, all right? A week to fill this entire area with shapes that interconnect with each other, okay? And I want them all to be about this size, so when you zoom out, it looks amazing, okay? So I'm zoomed in to about right this area. My document size is 8.5 by 11 by 300 dots per inch, okay? And I know I told you that, you know, you, you shouldn't draw at 300 dots per inch, but check this out. I wanted to make sure I showed you what this really does. So 72, and then I'm going to put this back to control V. Watch what happens to my shapes. Nothing. That's right because it's the same. This could be at 300 dots per inch and this could be 8.5 by 11 or it could be at 72 dots per inch and it could be 35 by 45. Hopefully that will show you the relationship to what the resolution is. The smaller this number, the more real world space it has. The higher the number, the less space it needs. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, so the rules of the assignment are simple. You could only use squares, okay, like this is a 3D square, cylinders, or spheres, okay. And most of all these shapes, except for the sphere, actually looks 3D, except for now, you know, you must have some kind of shading on spheres. So, you know, some rough concept shading. Okay. Now, how you go about this. Let's practice first, okay? Make um, cylinders. Make, you know, about 10 cylinders all around into the document at different angles. Just randomly place them. Keep them about the same size and just throw them around in these areas. Next, work on your cubes. Okay? Put cubes out there. Put 10 cubes randomly placed within the document. When it comes to the sphere, however, I wouldn't randomly place spheres. Spheres are very powerful shapes. Um, they should be added. Uh, you know, whenever they need to be added to like something like, say for instance here, I'll use a cylinder that's squished at one end. This is a totally legit shape in my book. Okay, you could still use cylinders, whether you squish them here, broaden them here, don't really matter. If you make them really long, you can make tubes out of them. The point is, just with these basic shapes alone, I think I could draw just about anything. Okay, so maybe, you know, I'll go in here and add, like, a small ball to this area up here. I'll sketch that in. Just like that. And I'll know to erase this part back. And I'll clean this up with my eraser. Again, I draw probably more with my eraser than I actually do my pen. And then I'll concept this out just a little bit. Now I set myself a light in the scene. That's this little arrow over here. So that's telling me, hey, whenever I make a shape, I'm kind of limiting myself to what I'm shading. There we go. Now this is a perfect opportunity to kind of go over this. See these blacks in this area? It looks horrible because the blacks are too high. So this is where a case of the needed eraser is much needed. If I knock down all these blacks to a certain level, and if I wanted to make them pop as far as a, a drawing goes, well, I would only put strong blacks in areas like this, where two forms meet. 
or where two forms meet in shadow areas. Okay. There we go. All right, so don't feel hung up on the assignment. You know, that's a thing I'm going to see very quickly. You're going to run out of ideas. There is no set idea here. You're not drawing monsters. You're not drawing people. You're drawing shapes. Have fun with it. Make a little tiny widget factory. That's what my idea was, where, you know, you have, you have an object in uh, several objects in foreground and background. And then you start, you know, just kind of playing around with the idea that they're interconnected in some nature with cylinders. Okay, maybe this is connected to this one via hose. Okay. And then you can go kind of go in here and define that hose just a little bit. Maybe I like that. Maybe it needed something else that connected to there to make it a little bit more interesting. So take that, build it up. Maybe make it indent in there. There we go. And again, being zoomed out, you know, that looks pretty amazing, right? Little widgets. All right, so do this. Have fun with it. Again, this is probably something that you should do often, not because I'm making you do it, because if you're a student of mine, I will definitely make you do this, but maybe as a, a professional artist or an artist that's just learning digital, this is something you should actually sit down and do weekly, you know, or daily, okay, until you get really good at it, because it's, it's all about how to process shapes. All right, so have a good one, and until next lesson.